hope you're now at the lotus feet of our beloved Lord. The key to joyous living is finding God within. Begin by serving others and seeing Him in them. Act only after her asking, is this what Swami wants? His love protects and guides you. His shrine is in your heart. His love protects and guides you. His shrine is in your heart. Do see his form beside you and take his hand when you walk. Repeat his name with feeling. Keep company with the good. Act only after her asking, is this what Swami wants? Then fears and doubts are ended, his shrine is in your heart. Then fears and doubts are ended, his shrine is in your heart. Sigh is in your heart, sir. Thank you very much for, for inviting me. It's, uh, it's the ultimate joy to be in his presence and, and his very good company. I came to Swami in 1976, uh, as I think many have, through Sam Sandweiss's wonderful book, The Holy Man and the Psychiatrist. And um, over the years, uh, I've learned a very great deal. I've grown a whole lot. I've changed a whole lot. And the more I learn, and the more I know, is the more I realize that I know very little. Uh, I know very little of the mystery of Swami. And as Swami said early on in one of his early discourses, he said, you'll never understand my mystery. Just become immersed in it. And that is my experience, to become immersed in it. And so here I am going around and talking uh, about Swami. And do I know uh, a great deal more than anyone else? No. What am I really doing? Uh, actually, what I'm doing is probably what all of us would be doing when you get up and talk. And that is uh, repeating Swami's words repeating Swami's teachings and trying our very best to exemplify uh, Swami's love. Um, for all the years that I've been involved with Swami, I seem to have had uh, several things that are very important to me. And since knowing of him so vastly changed my life, I wanted to uh, do as much as possible to encourage that uh, knowledge of him on the part of others. And so I became interested in things uh, such as uh, letting people who don't know about Swami's uh, presence learn about it. Although he doesn't want us to proselytize, he does want us to uh, teach in another way. I remember reading um, <laughs> A, a very nice uh, line that said, there are only three ways to teach anything in this world. Number one is by setting a good example. Uh, number two is by setting a good example. <laughs> and number three is, of course, by setting a good example. So that, that's, what, uh, uh, that's what we try to do. I've been very much interested in uh, newcomers. I've been very much interested in um, uh, young adults because Really, uh, those are the people who are going to be uh, the leaders and in the very, very near future. I've been very interested in uh, spreading his word in many ways, such as uh, the use of uh, talking books. And um, I've also been interested in, uh, because many of us in New York have felt for such a long period of time that we really would like to have a mandir. We'd like to have Swami's mandir in New York. What I'd like to talk about today um, uh, are some experiences with Swami in the past two years. And uh, it began just about two years ago. 
uh, when uh, on a visit to Swami, I was carrying lots of things. I've been in the role of carrying lots of things. And that time I was carrying the most beautiful presentation for a mandir in New York. It was 14 by 14, put together by uh, 30 uh, adults and children. Absolutely exquisite. It was like a, a medieval illuminated manuscript. Marvelous. And uh, then there was a talking books presentation with an uh, example, and then there was a, uh, an idea for, uh, uh, for young adults to come to India. Well, um, what happened was that uh, um, Swami finally, after carrying it for uh, about uh, a week, uh, looked through it, called me in, read it very carefully, and said that we would talk about it. Then I asked him about, um, at a second interview, I said, Swami, um, I've been working on a, a program in, uh, in the East with young adults, and uh, I would like to be able to bring a group of young adults uh, to you next summer. He said, uh, how many? I said, 20, Swami, because I thought uh, 20 was the number you needed for a lower airfare. Uh, wow. and, and then I thought, uh, in my mind, I said, 10 boys, 10 girls. And immediately he said, out loud, 10 boys, 10 girls, no. Better 20 boys. That was, that was wonderful because he, one of the things that he's has been working with me on over a period of time is to make me aware of the fact that um, he knows everything that I do. He knows everything that I say. And most difficult of all, he knows everything that I think. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I know that I've, uh, the actions have gotten vastly better and I know the words are much better, but the thoughts, that's the hard one, you know, that's a very difficult one. And sometimes you say, oh, well, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't the best possible thought, but uh, he's not going to see that. We'll just um, <laughs> put that under the rug a little bit and hope it doesn't happen. But um, so that was another one other example, just reminding me that if I think it, if you think it, uh, he knows, that's it. He just, he just knows. It's both uh, beautiful and it's an, also should be an encouragement for us to think correctly. Um, so he, um, I, I, he said, 10 boys, I said, uh, t better 20 boys. He said, you, um, you bring them. And then he took his hands like that and he went, withdrew them and like that. And he said, I will change them. I will make all arrangements. I will take care of everything. I will change them. Swami, I'd like the boys to write a, a letter to me explaining why they want to go so they don't think they're coming on some very special kind of uh, a holiday. He said, good, do. You bring, uh, and I said, when, Swami? He said, oh, uh, come for summer course at uh, Brindavan. So I was absolutely delighted, overjoyed. This is wonderful. This is a marvelous opportunity. Um, he also gave, a, gave me some further information on, uh, on, on, on the Mandir. Maybe I'll do that if we get to it a little bit later. Um, on the talking books, he said that was very good. I think principally not because talking books are important, not just for the blind and uh, people with hearing problems, but they're very important. Uh, for students who have uh, learning disabilities, such as uh, dyslexia. And vast numbers in this country have really been able to achieve a success by making use of uh, talking books. And I can see, it, I can think of no books that are really more marvelous than, uh, than Swami's books. So, I went back uh, after that, uh, after that um, visit to uh, Puta Party. Uh, with my three proposals, very happy, and said, now where am I going to get the guys from because, uh, or the boys, as Swami said, because if I start to choose myself, uh oh, I'm going to be in very big trouble, terrible trouble. So I said, okay, I'll make a few phone calls around the country and just let Swami do it. They'll just come as they come, and they'll come in the order they're going to come, and that's it. And I'm not going to uh, say that one is better than the other, one is more appropriate than the other. Uh, and they uh, and they did come, and uh, oh, and when I, that interview, when I left uh, the interview, he said to me, um, "How many?" Uh, I said, "20, Swami." He said, "Girls?" I said, "No, Swami, <laughs> boys." 
He said, very good. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the, the girl, you never know when Swami says something, there's always a meaning. It doesn't always, you don't always uh, get the meaning immediately, but uh, sooner or later, uh, the meaning uh, surfaces and you understand uh, that there's not a word that's ever meaningless. There's not a word that's uh, uh, ever wasted. So I went back and I got, um, I got the boys together. Um, I had spoken with the vice chancellor and he was delighted. He thought it was a very, very good idea. And I said, I'd like to do a play. Um, and he said, oh, that's very good. Swami, uh, Swami likes plays. Uh, guess, go ahead, and um, we will talk about the contents of the play. I just want to be sure that it's okay. I said, all right, we'll do that. So the boys, the boys came, and they came from um, all over the United States. And it was a very interesting group that um, finally came together because uh, it said something that was very important. It really said that um, both geographically and ethnically, this group of young men uh, was a, um, a reflection of the melting pot that this country is at, it, uh, at its best. And I, again, I did not try to do that, but there were people from, <coughs> boys from uh, whose origins were Africa, Europe, uh, Asia, India. They were from all over. It was very, very nice. And we put together uh, a play, and I was looking for a title, and one of the most accessible uh, of Swami's miracles is that whenever I have been in need of something, and that has happened a lot, uh, I always find a source of unfailing inspiration in his, uh, in his works, in his discourses. I, you don't have to pick up a, one of his volumes and read very far before you find something that really answers, that touches, that speaks to the heart. And when I was looking for um, a title for the play, I said, well, I don't know what I'm going to call this, but I did the same thing. And I, after a few pages, I came across this quote, which I think sums up very beautifully the state of things uh, that we are experiencing now. And Swami says, quote, sunk in the search of passing pleasures and cheap recreation, people have become deaf to the counsels of the past and the call of the sublime. So I decided to call the play The Call of the Sublime. And all the guys said, yeah, that's a good, that's a good title. So we put together this play, uh, long distance, with uh, I'm in New York and uh, three others throughout the country, and we wrote the play long distance. And it's a play that has to deal with uh, transformation because of all of Swami's miracles, he says the most important one are not the materializations. The most important one is that he changes us. He transforms us, he uplifts us. And uh, we just have to cooperate a little bit for that to really take place. Well, the play deals with a, uh, three college roommates uh, who, as a result of one of the boys who's gone to Swami, Swami's summer school um, that summer, uh, produces a change in his roommates and others by doing uh, uh, Psy service. And in the play, there are, two, uh, there are two very interesting characters, allegorical characters that I think everybody in the room knows. Uh, one is called Monkey Mind, and <laughs> we've all got one of those, or have had, hopefully have had, and the other uh, we all certainly have, and that is uh, conscience. So um, Monkey Mind and Conscience were always on stage, uh, influencing the, uh, the course of action of the play, and then there was music and um, uh, the songs, and um, uh, there's some talent, some very interesting uh, talent some of the boys had, and we were all set to go. So in um, March, um, of uh, uh, 92, all the boys came into New York City to, and we camped out in my apartment and we rehearsed the play and everything was wonderful. I had a lot of rough edges, but we were, we were having good, we had a very good time. That was very interesting experience, really. 
uh, because here were, uh, of the 20, 15 were able to come. Most of these boys don't have uh, much means. Uh, they're going to school, uh, they're working, and to come into New York and to go to India is, is a very big deal, but an indication of uh, the degree to which uh, they are, uh, this is a matter of real priority to them to come to do Swami's work. So uh, they came in and um, they got along beautifully. I have never seen, in, uh, as a businessman running uh, companies all my life, I've never seen either there or in the Sai organization, uh, 15 guys who work so beautifully together because there are a lot of issues. Which part were they going to get? There, at the time, there were three uh, female roles, and of course they're played by boys. And who is going to do that? Uh, do they want to do that? Would they do that? Uh, surprisingly enough, I thought they'd probably say, oh no, I don't want to do that. No. But uh, we'd have to draw straws or something like that. But no, most of the, most of the guys said, well, if, if uh, that's what Swami wants, uh, then uh, it'll be a hoot, and we'll have a good time doing it. So we had the roles uh, distributed, and uh, the boys also watched. I, I uh, as David, in his very, very sweet introduction, said, I, I do carry sandwiches with me uh, wherever I go for the homeless. And uh, although I hadn't talked about it to them, they saw what I was doing and uh, decided to do the same thing. And so they uh, were making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches also. So from the, uh, from, uh, from the Statue of Liberty to, to Wall Street to Central Park, uh, uh, the guys were going and going about uh, seeing the city and distributing and distributing food. Very interesting to note that after they had left, uh, uh, a neighbor of mine uh, I ran into uh, at uh, lunchtime and she said, oh, can you have time for a cup of coffee because I have to tell you, those boys, I'd like to know about those boys. Who were they? Uh, they are, they're very extraordinary. Why are they extraordinary? Well, my, my kids are that age, and they have lots of friends coming up, and they're nothing, nothing, nothing like that. I said, well, what are these guys like? Let me know. He said, well, they're, they're very friendly. They're very smiling. They're, they're cheerful. They're nice. You know, and they just seem to glow. I don't know what it is about them, but they were just glowing. And when I'd see them coming down the street, I'd walk faster so that I could get in the elevator with them. Uh, <laughs> because it was just nice to be there. Uh, and so uh, she said, well, what is it? What were you doing with uh, uh, those guys? And I explained, because they gave me an opportunity to talk about Swami. But uh, they had done, they had said what was most important. Uh, much, I just could fill in the, the, some of the details, but uh, they were doing something that uh, they really touched uh, people's hearts. At any rate, um, all I knew is that we just needed the clearance from uh, the final clearance from Swami, according to the Vice Chancellor, and uh, that was clearly a matter of, you know, that was going to come because Swami had said, bring them, I will change them. Okay, so there's no doubt. Uh, we made the reservations, uh, the plane reservations, but strangely enough, the airline, uh, uncharacteristically, uh, did not ask for money. Why were they not asking for money? Uh, that was very unusual. I called and I said, well, you know, we have these tickets. And uh, I said, well, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We will... Okay, uh, I sent um, uh, I sent a uh, fax to the vice chancellor, and I said, please uh, give us final clearance. And then I got the fax back saying, Swami says that uh, it's going to be very crowded this year at summer course, and uh, next year is better. So what can we do? We just have to accept the divine will. Well. I was stunned. What do I do? I mean, Swami did say that to me. There's no question. There was, I, I was in there alone, but he <laughs> did all those things. Uh, there's even more of a story, but then I would never get to lunch. So, uh, but, um, I decided I would phone everybody I could phone in India. I would send telegrams. I would call people uh, in this country who had 
uh, the greatest experience with Swami as to what uh, I should do. And there are those who said, well, no, how you go ahead. You, he told you, forget about what the Vice Chancellor says. Swami is in charge, you go. I said, yeah, but I know the Vice Chancellor really well, and he's a wonderful man, and he wouldn't send me a fax like that, and how do I then show up and say, uh, Professor Sampat, please uh, take care of us? Now what? I mean, after he sent... So finally, after much anguish, I decided that uh, the boys, if it didn't work, the boys didn't have the money to support themselves in Bangalore for, uh, for, the, uh, for that long period of the summer course. So I decided that, uh, okay, that uh, we really shouldn't go. And uh, that was a difficult decision. And then I called, the, called them up on the phone, and it's very interesting. Uh, there, I remember we had invested a great deal of time, we'd come to New York, we'd, we'd written this play, there was so much uh, enthusiasm on the part of these guys about going to Swami's summer course, and uh, I just had to tell each one, and as uh, I talked, they, uh, they, gave me, they gave me their answers, and their answers were surprisingly um, wise, I thought. Yes, it, truthfully, they were, were they disappointed? Yes. But deeply disappointed? No. Their faith was stronger than their, than their, than their passing disappointment. Uh, they said, oh well, uh, that's Swami, you never know what he's going to do, but it'll be all right. Another boy said, oh, I had a dream. In my dream, Swami handed me this invitation to summer course, so I know that we're going to go. If not this year, next year, Meanwhile, we've rehearsed a play. Let's do the play. We've got to do the play. Um, and another boy said, well, you know, this is such an extraordinary thing that we're part of that uh, although I don't understand, that I, there's no way I'm going to understand, I really feel that I'm a part of his mystery. And I just know it's going to turn out all right. And they all agreed uh, to come into New York again uh, for uh, the end of May, the Memorial Day Conference of the uh, Northeast and uh, Mid-Atlantic regions. So they came in again. And this time we decided we put on the play there. And uh, we had, uh, it was very sweet. It was unusually sweet. I, I introduced the boys, uh, not by name, but by the state from which they came. And that in itself said a very great deal because you could see that uh, these young men came from uh, all over the United States. They were not just a group from, let's say, uh, the Northeast. And uh, we, we had rewritten the play and uh, we did our best with it. What was really nice is there, there was a, there's a kind of naturalness about this, about them. When they got there, we had two hours, so they're out, uh, uh, they're out tossing a football, playing basketball, having a good time. After the play was over, um, uh, somebody uh, very thoughtfully gave us an ice cream party, so we had some ice cream. But then someone said, you know, they're singing budgeons in the, in the mandir. And then without anybody saying, well, maybe we ought to go, well, let's go sing budgeons, or maybe we'll... They just got up and went. That's it. Uh, just like uh, uh, the, tr the group just left, walked, finished their ice cream, and then sang budgeons. It was very nice and very touching. Well. Um, I went back to Swami um, in um, last uh, September, very end of August, September. And uh, of course, the most important thing in my mind is, uh, what, about, what about these boys? I mean, they, we really, something has to happen. And um, I also want to know about the Mandir. I had lots of, I had lots of questions. And, of all the things that uh, Swami has uh, given me that I really am most deeply appreciative is when I'm there, is that I have had the, the privilege of sitting on the veranda, which means that I have greater access to Swami. I can stay there until he goes upstairs and sit there for hours and hours and hours and hours. And um, it's a very beautiful experience. Um, one day there was uh, an afternoon darshan that was very extraordinary. Sometimes, um, I, can, I find that um, I've been called for an interview and I have a lot of questions, a lot of things to say, and I cannot say a word. I, that's it. I mean, I've just forgotten everything, can't do anything. Uh, and other times I'm, very, I'm able to be very verbal. 
So it really, I think, depends on what the Swami wants and what, the, <laughs> what my role is supposed to be. At any rate, that was, uh, there had been one interview, and that was a, I can't say a word interview. Uh, and then in an afternoon, uh, after, um, uh, after Darshan, uh, and before Bhajan, um, Swami did not call anybody in. And there was this, what for me was such an extraordinary experience. He um, came down the veranda, and he stopped just where uh, I was sitting. And I suddenly realized that the hem of his robe was over my foot. And he stayed in one spot with his two feet like that for one hour and 15 minutes. He never moved. And other people said they hadn't seen that. He started to talk to one of the professors in, uh, I assume, Telugu. And then um, he would turn his body and face out and more of the students who were, who were seated there. And he had in his hand uh, some of the letters, the letters that he had with him. So with his hand behind his back and the letters, his letters are like about <laughs> two inches from my nose. I can see the handwriting in the letters. Some were very, I saw a couple of beautiful scripts. I saw some uh, ragged handwriting on uh, little pieces of paper. And he is uh, holding them. And then what he was doing, he was doing such a beautiful thing with, 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 uh, with the boys. It was marvelous. How is your grandmother? Is she feeling better? Oh, I'm so, I'm so happy. Um, then um, talking to another boy, I said, Christian boy, much too much talking, not enough studying, much too much talking, not good, not good. Uh, and he um, called forward a student who is a boy from uh, Chicago. Uh, who was going to school there, and he had him go all the way down the far end and come down the center aisle, so the boy was kneeling just to my, to my right, and Swami is here, um, and when Swami uh, is facing out, the letters are my face, when Swami is turning this way to the boy, um, my chin is grazing the hem of his robe, and I'm looking, at, looking up at him, and um, he, um, uh, he asked the boy some questions, where are you from? Chicago, Swami. Go back to Chicago. What are you doing here? <laughs> I'm going to your school. Good schools in Chicago. <laughs> no, Swami, I don't want to go. I want to be here. Yes, 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 I, I know. I found out later that the boy had given a very beautiful, very beautiful talk the day before on faith. And Swami had made the rounds of, uh, of the schools, and that was his way of, a uh, beautiful way of, uh, uh, rewarding him. Then he called forward a little boy, about uh, oh, eight or nine, and he had the boy go down all the way at the end, come down, and the little boy is kneeling next to me, he's like this, and Swami says, uh, um, where is your father? And the boy's voice was just a whisper. He said, you are my father, Swami. No, 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 no. Where is your father? You are my father. <laughs> you know what I mean. What does your father do for a living? <laughs> he is a doctor, Swami. Ah, he is a doctor. And then he asked him a few more questions. In each case, the boy's voice was so soft and so tender and so full of love. And um, then he said, what do you want? And the boy said, you, Swami. What do you want? <laughs> Again, you, Swami. What do you want? Silence. And the boy said, I want to sing in the Monday in front of you. <laughs> and Swami said, go inside. <laughs> so, I'll move the story up a little bit because uh, after the scenes that followed, there was a budget, and at the very end of the budget, there was this boy's voice. It did not sing. It was not singing a budget. It was singing a song, and this, this the voice was powerful. It was young, powerful, strong. It was beautiful. And there was such love in that, in, in the voice. And I, I couldn't see in, but uh, a neighbor sitting to my right could, and he nodded to me, motioned that it was the boy sitting next to me. So uh, it really was just wonderful. At any rate, the boy left, 
And then Swami um, um, turned uh, forward and the letters were in my nose again. And I'm, I'm looking at his hands, you know, looking at the palm of his hand, just looking at all the details, the nails. And, uh, and with one hand, I'm holding on to the hem of his robe for an hour and 15 minutes. And then suddenly, I find that about seven letters fell in my lap. Uh, I said, oh. So I pick up the letters because at this point, I'm still just uh, very silent. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really likely to say much. <laughs> but I had to do something with the letters that didn't belong to me. Uh, so I, um, I finally, as Swami turned, I said, Swami, these letters fell from your hand. And he took the letters and he said, where are you from? <laughs> New York, Swami. Uh, what are you doing there? <laughs> Swami, uh, my life has changed and I'm doing your work. What work are you doing? <laughs> and my first thing was to say, well, Swami, I want to bring these, uh, these 20 boys. And I knew that that was not the time or the place to do that. And I really wanted to do that. And he said, well, what work are you doing? I said, well, Swami, I'm, um, I'm working with people who are n new to your teachings. I'm running in my apartment newcomers uh, series twice a month uh, so that they will learn and practice. And then he turns to the boys and he said, in New York, he is uh, working with people who are new so that they will learn and practice. And then he says, learn and practice, practice. You know, think about what else are you doing? <laughs> uh, so I said, well, Swami, um, oh, no, he said, what else are you doing? I said, well, I'm doing service. He said, what, are you teaching EHV? I said, yes, Swami, I am teaching EHV. Uh, he, and then he said, in America, he is teaching EHV. And then he said, heart, head, hand. Heart, head, hand. Very good Psy organization. At any rate, then he, then, then, uh, he turned to me and said just about the most wonderful thing of all. He just said, I am very happy with your work. So, I mean, that dissolved. And then he, and then he said, we will talk. We will talk later. Sitting next to me was uh, a friend from uh, Canada. And they do have a Mandir up in uh, Montreal. And he turned to the guy, and his name is Mickey, he said, good work in Canada too, but, he said, your wife is doing much more than you. <laughs> and he said, yes, I know, Swami. <laughs> uh, Howard Murford was there, and then he, he uh, Howard has just finished uh, a new book, which I, and I haven't seen out yet, which is called uh, um, The End of the Road. And it comes from a quotation from Swami that says, uh, at the end of the road, there is God. <laughs> okay. uh, and, and Howard was there, and he doesn't see too terribly well. And he's, he's fine, but he doesn't, he's not hearing as well as he should. Anyway, Swami did start to talk about him and call him uh, uh, perfect Murfoot. <laughs> And when I, I, when I saw him and his wife, Iris, after, I told him, told him, I said, did you hear what Swami said? He said, no, what did he say? Uh, I said, well, he called you perfect river. He said, oh, he hasn't done that in 20 years. And he was, he was just in such a blissful state. At, at any rate, um, um, before I left, I had uh, another uh, private interview, and I said, Swami, um, you told me to bring the boys last year, and um, then you didn't give clearance. These boys are really such good boys, and they really love you. Swami, may I have permission to bring them? He said, how many? <laughs> I said, 20, Swami. He said, girls? I said, no, Swami, boys. Um, <laughs> and he said, when? I said, Swami, whenever it's your will. But last time you said it would be summer course. Do I have permission to bring? Yes, you have permission, bring. I said, Swami, we have written a play. 
we would like to do the play. Do we have permission to do the play? And uh, he said, yes, you have permission. So I said, oh, okay, now this is very, this time it's very, it's very, it's very clear, right? Uh, and then I said, uh, at the same time, I said, Swami, I brought you plans last year for a Mandir in New York, and you told me to come back at Christmas, which I did with our search for land and, for, and some drawings, but nothing has happened on it. Uh, is this the right time for us to go ahead with a Mandir in New York? And if so, um, how should we go about doing it? And he said, first bring the boys, then we will talk. And then he put his hand on my chest and he pressed very firmly and he said, Swami's Mandir is here. You know, and that's really <laughs> where it is. Um, <laughs> when I finished that interview, there's some other things that, that happened because he talked too about, I was very much interested in seeing if I could in some way work, integrate uh, Phyllis Crystal's work, uh, which I find very good, um, with uh, EHV and to use it uh, in the school system because I think, to me at any rate, um, that's a tool. And it's a tool that essentially teaches a lesson that every one of us is in the process of learning. And that tool is, uh, that lesson is a lesson of detachment, how to detach ourselves. Um, and he told me, I also went over some service projects and he told me what to do, told me to go ahead. And then he added something about hospitals, which is something I'm working on uh, currently. Um, and then just as I was leaving, uh, he said, uh, how many are you bringing? <laughs> I said, 20. And he said, the girls again? I said, no one. All from New York? No, Swami, from all over the country. Good. Then he gave me a lot of food. He said, give this to the boys and tell them that I love them. So, you know, and then when, so by the time you go out, you're just, uh, you know, you're just flowing tears and, of, of joy, and it's very beautiful. So we went back, I went back, and I knew that, okay, now there's no question, I, we're gonna definitely go this year, but uh, when some people went in, um, in February, and they came back and said, oh, the vice chancellor says that, uh, you should send Swami a telegram because he can't do anything until he gives him clearance. And I said, oh my God, we've been, through, we've been through this last year and I, now what am I gonna do? And it's a very interesting thing because I, it really is a measure of my own personal change. Uh, all of a sudden, um, I remembered that in one of the summer, sh the summer showers that I find the most extraordinary the most helpful, because I use it uh, with uh, newcomers as a text, I even use it with kids, and it is um, Summer Showers of 1990, in which Swami talks, really, it's really a, a series of lessons that build. He talks about the body, the senses, the mind, the intellect, the atma, it's all beautifully laid out, it's wonderful. Um, so, um, I, um, Oh, let's see, where was I? <laughs> where was I? Uh, oh, yeah, the vice, uh, uh, the vice chance, oh, yes, in the summer showers, there's a, there's a chapter at the end in which Swami says, <laughs> he says, uh, my word is very precious. If you don't listen to my word, if you don't follow my instructions, then don't be surprised if things don't work the way they should. So at this point I said, well, last time I asked everybody under the sun, um, and um, I wound up by not going. This year, he now told me very specifically, and to, for me not to, to do anything else would be to really doubt his word. It's like, uh, Swami, you don't really know what you're saying, so say it again, you know, <laughs> and put it in writing. So I said, no, no, we're, we're definitely going. The, the, air, the uh, made the plane reservations and they wanted the money. <laughs> um, and, uh, so that was, that was a kind of a clear sign. And um, we, uh, we did go, and this time I sent Swami a telegram and said, as per your instructions of last September, <laughs> uh, we are arriving on, uh, I think it was May 17th or whatever it was, and uh, we will go directly uh, to you in Brindavan to await uh, 
uh, your, uh, your further instructions. And I uh, sent a letter to the, the vice chancellor and to anybody else I could think of, uh, <laughs> saying that we were going to, uh, they were going to come. Uh, we revised the play, we, um, and we went. So it was with a great deal of uh, excitement because um, we didn't go the year before. Swami turned, changed a few of the boys uh, in the last few months in a very strange way. Uh, so the, the, uh, the group was somewhat different. Uh, three boys were suddenly were not able to come. They were immediately replaced. Uh, but they had to be replaced in such a way because Swami is calling us, was calling us, a team. And I couldn't, and I, the, the Vice Chancellor said, you don't bring, you just can't bring people. You've got to bring a team. And if these boys have not developed a consciousness together as a team, it's not going to work. So only use your own discretion, just bring a team. So uh, those new boys had uh, came into New York, and others came, and we, uh, we integrated, and we went. So we arrived uh, in, in May, and uh, we got, got on a bus, and we went directly uh, to, uh, uh, to Whitefield, to Brindavan. Um, I went inside, the boys were in the bus, um, and um, we had very beautiful scarves. It's just a USA on it, and beautiful lettering. Um, and uh, I went in to see the uh, the warden, who's a lovely guy, and, I, and he said, yes, yes, I know you're coming, but, you know, uh, uh, I can't do anything. I, I'll, uh, Swami is in an interview now, so when he comes out, I will go and ask him what to do about you. It was an hour and a half I sat in his office, and the boys were in the bus, and then Swami came out of the interview, and Narasim Murthy went over to see him, and came back with a big smile and said, Swami is giving you four rooms in the guest house. Oh, so uh, <laughs> I went to tell the boy, we've got four rooms in the guest house, Swami is accepted, everything is fine. Very, very excited and very happy. So that was after the morning darshan, so our first darshan was in the afternoon. And uh, again, I uh, went to see the, uh, the warden and I decided, well, uh, I said, since Swami is um, uh, has allowed us to come, uh, is there a at Darshan, should we just be in the regular lines, or since uh, the boys are students, is there anything, uh, uh, is there any special uh, that we could get? He said, well, uh, call the boys together and form a single line, and I will ask. And uh, whatever happened is that we were then uh, ushered into the very first row of, I don't know how many of you have been at the uh, at Sai Ramesh Hall in, in Whitefield, that new kind of enormous kind of greenhouse. Uh, it's really what it is, or it felt like. Uh, in, in May, it felt like a greenhouse, and so, <laughs> last month it was much nicer. Uh, they, um, we were in the first row, uh, very first row. And Swami came in on the lady's side, and he saw us sitting there, and he moved quickly across the stage, came down the stairs, and he came up to me and he said, how many did you bring? <laughs> I said, 18, Swami. Very good number. <laughs> um, and then he, um, when did you arrive? Questions like that. Then he went down the row of the boy. He, he is, he is so <laughs> sweet. And so he went down and the second boy, he said, oh, you're not a new boy. You're an old boy. You were here two years ago. And, you know, he was, of course. <laughs> and then he went and he asked different questions for different boys. And then there's uh, one very, very, very interesting boy from Southern California. And Swami said, um, how is your health? The boy said, fine, Swami. He said, hmm, sometimes fine, sometimes not so fine. And then he made some vibhuti for him, uh, said a few other words to him. Um, he came back to me, stepped on my foot, uh, <laughs> and uh, then said to me, he said, uh, tomorrow, don't bring them here, inside. I said, oh my God, uh, inside, wow. So that was extraordinary. Um, the following morning, we got inside means, uh, next to his house uh, and 
uh, and that's some people are allowed there. Certainly, the college boys are allowed there when they're not uh, when their school doesn't require they're allowed in. So we were allowed, and we were the first ones uh, to go in. So we were in a row, always very neatly in a row, just outside of the, the doors when he comes down. And um, again, he came up to me. He said, um, "18 with you, 19. Very happy." And then he went down the line, spoke to so many of the boys, said little things. And then um, I did his darshan, and then he, dis then he went off in the car. And the warden came up to me and said, you know, you have these privileges, and so uh, you are able to stay here until the two doors of Swami's house closes. At that point, everyone must leave the area. So it's up to you. I said, well, we're going to stay. Uh, I said, I don't know how long it'll be. I said, well, you know, <laughs> we're staying. About 15 minutes later, Swami came back. And he called us all in for an interview yeah. mm -hmm. immediately. And it was such an extraordinary interview. Uh, he, it was really a teaching interview. He asked everybody's name. He was welcoming and warm and sweet and friendly and loving. And, he, uh, and then he asked questions. Um, what is the aim of education? Can someone? What is? Education is for what? Yeah, education is for life, uh, not for a living. Right? Uh, what, is, uh, what is the end of uh, education? Yeah, education is for, for character. Lots of questions. Um, what is study? I didn't know this one. What is study? Steady. Yeah, study is for steady. It's to make the mind steady. So we asked the boys all these questions, inter interacted with them, and um, then I said, Swami, um, we have uh, prepared a play, but we really need time to rehearse it. Uh, can we have permission to uh, rehearse the play? And he said, oh, yes, yes, rehearse every day, rehearse every day. I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I said, oh, okay, Swami, thank you. Um, so that was, there's a lot more in the interview, but uh, no. uh, at any rate, um, we, we left, and um, then uh, a lot of the guys were very concerned because they did not have uh, enough whites. They were just short of whites, except for one boy who had plenty of whites, the others. So we've got to go into Bangalore, we've got to buy whites because we have to look right, and da da da, da. So they took cabs in, I said, okay, go in, but um, you must be back at 2.30 because I think Swami is giving out the little badges for the summer course, without which you don't you can't get oh. into any of them. Very, very precious little badges. So be sure you're back at 2.30. Well, at 2.30, they weren't back. At 23, they weren't back. I went into the warden's office, and then um, uh, the registrar, Mr. Chakravarti, came in and he said to me, he said, you know, all your boys are not going to be able to get into summer course. I said, oh my God, what, what do you mean? He said, well, um, their hair. Uh, their hair is too long. <laughs> Many have long hair, and that's not good. You, they can't be part of uh, Swami student groups with hair like that. Uh, there's a barber in the basement, and get them immediately and get their hair cut. I said, fine. <laughs> uh, now, uh, for these guys, uh, some of them had incredible hair. Tomo from New York had huge black hair that was incredible looking and there were a lot of a number of the boys anyway but very nice very, but very long hair well at uh, 10 of 3 they came back and I said oh my God, where were you guys well we had this very difficult trip because we went to all these stores in Bangalore looking for whites for, so that we'd look right and you know they didn't have the right fabric the, the, the sizes weren't right it, they didn't look right it, we couldn't get anything and so here we are I said, well, okay, but in 25 minutes, at 3.15, we have to be inside to get our badges. And uh, there are a few guys, and then I call them out, I have something to say to you. Uh, and I said, I hope you're feeling very strong. <laughs> uh, this is a uh, decision that only you can make. <laughs> but uh, the, vi the, uh, <laughs> uh, the registrar says that you've got to get a haircut. And there is a... Uh, Barbara in the basement of, a, of the hostel. Um, and they looked kind of stunned. <laughs> I said, you know, 
there isn't even time to decide. So come with me. Uh, I mean, if you choose not to, I, well, that's you can't go to the summer course. That's it. So we went as in single file into the basement of the <laughs> of, uh, of the hostel, and um, the barber did what he had to do. And they came out, some of them in a visible state of shock. Because, <laughs> I mean, this had all happened very quickly. <laughs> uh, then we, were, we went inside, and, um, and Swami had all the students line, lined up in two rows. And, you know, he does everything in every detail he takes care of. He's telling us to do that, too. Uh, there's not a detail that's too small. You just don't let somebody else do it because you're... Uh, he does it. He watches. He, he checks. Nothing is too small for him to do. He's standing there passing out pencils, passing out books, passing out badges. Other people are doing it too, but he's doing it. And um, then he came over to us and um, he said, they didn't get books, they didn't get notebooks. And where are the notebooks? So they got the notebooks. And then uh, they pass out the student thing and um, the badges. And I get one and Swami runs over and says, no, 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 he's not, he's not a student, he's a teacher. Uh, so he called somebody else over, get teacher's badge. So I got a teacher's badge. And uh, then he went back to the center of the group and he said, um, you went to Bangalore looking for whites. Couldn't find any. Wrong fabric. Size is not good. You were not happy. I know. I saw you. I was there. <laughs> and they're sitting there. <laughs> you imagine the state of shock <laughs> of getting their hair cut, <laughs> being told about the whites. His reminding that we've been accepted to this extraordinary experience, and he knows absolutely, absolutely everything. And at the same time, he's giving so much love and so much attention that we were just ecstatic. Uh, the, it was beyond belief. He put us in four, uh, in four rooms in the guest house, and uh, I wound up with the six, five of the guys in my room. And uh, it was very nice. They were very, all very quiet. It was, uh, it was very well, f we were very well focused. That was, that was the important thing. Uh, very, Swami, as you know, is a great disciplinarian, and particularly in his schools. You do not uh, do it your way. There is a prescribed way. You follow it. Uh, you follow it thoroughly. You're very careful. And uh, the guys were really very, very, very good about that. For example, the morning started off so sweetly because we were given uh, permission to uh, join with the boys in the, in the hostel. And that meant that it starts at 5 o'clock. And that was optional, really, uh, for summer course for the, for the Swami students. The summer course is used in part for those new entering students as an orientation to Indian culture and spirituality. And, um, but for some reason or other, uh, the boys are not required to get up for the five o'clock devotional services. They can, they're encouraged to, but not required. And so I did the same thing with the guys. I said, look, you know, it starts at five o'clock, I'm going, um, I think, it would be a good thing if you went, but that's really up to you. And we were very jet-lagged. Uh, I must say, all the time we were there, uh, except when they were, someone wasn't feeling well, they were there at, in the morning. And the morning was, it was so specially sweet because the, uh, uh, the super bottom, uh, it was uh, 21 ohms, and the super bottom was done um, in unison. All of us sing the super bottom together. And it was so powerful. And then, the Gayatri, the last line of which was done differently. I've never heard it done quite that way before, but it's very sweet too. Um, so the day began that way. And then uh, in the morning, the program of a summer course was that there'd be lectures in the auditorium, an auditorium that seats about 1,500 people. And uh, sometimes Swami comes. And um, then in the afternoon, um, because of this new structure called the Sai Ramesh Hall, in uh, Brindavan, uh, 
his discourse every afternoon was open to everyone, which was really marvelous. So thousands of people are able to, to go and to hear, rather than just the 1,500 who have the badges for the course. And we were given um, permission to eat with the boys. So immediately after the morning program, uh, we would go, and because we were rehearsing immediately after lunch, uh, and immediately after the discourse, uh, we were uh, told that we had permission to jump the line. So <laughs> we're always up front, and Swami frequently came to eat. And uh, since we're right up there up front, we got incredible attention. Uh, there was never a day that he didn't talk to a bunch of us about one thing or another. Or uh, we didn't say something, ask a question. Uh, and then we'd sit on, on the floor uh, facing each other and, uh, uh, and you'd eat. Uh, I, uh, it's my first real experience. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I did a story tell about that. It's funny. Um, <laughs> Um, the, um, uh, this is my first experience trying to eat with your fingers, because I had never done that before. Occasionally, uh, some of the students uh, uh, took pity on a few of us who were having some trouble and brought us over plastic spoons, but after a while, I got, got the hang of it. And Swami would come, and it was so beautiful, because he would come, and he would walk down the rows, um, he would uh, occasionally talk uh, to, uh, to the students, he would see that uh, things were all right, he was the mother. Uh, really just being sure that everybody got what they should get and being sure that it was right. And it was so beautiful being there. One, one day, um, early on, he came up to me and he said, uh, how is the food? Oh, very good, Swami. Um, not too hot? No, Swami, it's not too hot. Not too hot for the boys? Uh, no, Swami, not too hot for the boys. They're very happy. And he said, happy. And then he walked away, about three or four steps, turns around, comes back to me and says, happiness is union with God. Nothing to do with food. <laughs> you know, he, he said it before. He, <coughs> He said things like that before, uh, but when he says them and you're there, or he says them to you, um, it's like so many of the things that he said, uh, it just, you know, it just becomes so deeply a part of you, a more real part of you than all the other stuff that, you, that you've experienced, and it's, uh, it's very powerful and very beautiful. And, Obviously, that's what we're, I mean, that's really the answer, isn't it? What are we all doing here? We're all, all of us looking uh, for opportunities to be happy, and uh, most of us in life uh, do it the wrong way. <laughs> Pretty consistently, Swami says that we're like, uh, we're like um, uh, people blindfolded in a pitch black room uh, looking for a black cat that isn't there. Uh, <laughs> And then he also he tells the story that then you probably remember about the uh, boys coming back one night and uh, there under the street lamp is this uh, elderly lady and she's on her hands and knees and one of the boys says, can we help you? What's wrong? And she said, well, yes, you can help. I'm uh, uh, looking for the, my needle and I was sewing and I can't find it. He said, you were sewing out here? He said, no, no, but I was sewing in my room, but the light is so bad there that I can't find it. So, uh, in other words, we have to look for it where we lost it. <laughs> and, uh, and it's in here. He said twice, both uh, the early, with once with the boys and once with the uh, interview a few weeks ago, when she said, uh, uh, peace is inside. Pieces outside, uh, which is really, uh, <laughs> really the way it, it is. Um, at any rate, <laughs> um, those lunches and occasionally dinners were really very sweet for that. Then, uh, we'd, on the May 23rd, in the morning, we'd been going doing our rehearsals and, and uh, doing fairly well. Uh, the, uh, I was again, as I often went into the warden's office in the morning just to see if there was anything special or anything I should know. Um, 
the um, uh, registrar, Mr. Chakravarti, came in, and I would tell you, I said to him, I said, incidentally, uh, I said, I want you to know that uh, you have a terrific barber. <laughs> and he laughed. That barber was sensational. I mean, he really was very good. The guys look much better. Um, and, and I think they're even going to keep it. <laughs> At any rate, uh, he said, uh, Swami is coming to your rehearsal this morning. I said, ah. Okay, so uh, we go over to the auditorium and I say, tell him, guys, look, uh, Swami is coming this morning. So we have to do a complete run through for the first time. And I hope we can get it done before. Meanwhile, no one was there except for um, Sam and Sharon Sandweiss, uh, who are old, old and good friends, but were there. And they would come to the rehearsal a few times. And uh, Sharon, they would do such sweet things. I mean, just wonderful, right things. They would bring chocolates, and they would bring nuts, and they'd bring cold water, and they'd drink stuff. So, you know, 18 guys of that age can really consume mm, quite a lot. And it was hot inside. Really very nice. Um, and uh, so we did went through, ran through the first rehearsal, and um, then they started to just horse around. And I walked down from the stage, and I'm standing by the orchestra pit, and I, uh, I'm facing them. I said, "Look, uh, let's get it together. We don't have time. We've got to start another rehearsal. When Swami comes in, we cannot uh, be wasting our time like this. We have to be rehearsing." And they're looking at me as if and with a very strange look, and something was really wrong. What was wrong was that, or not wrong, but as soon as I said, when Swami came, comes in, <laughs> Swami came in, that's it. <laughs> and by the time I finished my rap, and they're looking at me, <laughs> Swami, Swami says, teacher, come. <laughs> So I took Padnamaskar and um, I had ready for him a copy of the script, a copy of the songs, and a, a, uh, a proposed program that I wanted to have printed for all the students for the play. And he said, um, uh, play. I said, uh, from the beginning, Swami? He said, yes, from the beginning, play. So uh, we started and we opened with a dedication song and a presentation to him of a program and a flower and a trumpet fanfare and uh, and he let it go for about three quarters of the play and um, then um, he called me down and um, he said um, dialogue perfect music perfect very happy you need help. You need more musicians. I will give you musicians. You need, you need help with dresses, meaning costumes. You will go to Bangalore, get dresses. Uh, you need help with makeup, I will supply. You need help with lights, I will take care of it. You need help with sound system. I will take care of it. Anything you want, you will have. You just make a list. <laughs> I'm a list maker. <laughs> so you just make a list uh, and, give it, uh, and give it to the registrar. Everything is yours. But one thing, he said, one thing, you have a narrator for some of the scenes. Change and have a narrator before every scene I want to be sure that everyone understands uh, everything that's going on. So change that. I said, that's wonderful, Swami. Then, then the, um, um, the uh, registrar came up and said, Swami, you know, at the end of the play, there is some entertainment, including uh, a juggler, a couple, two jugglers. And Swami said, oh? And he said, do you want to see? And Swami said, oh, yes. So he sat back down in his chair, and we had two jugglers. One, I'll, I'll just talk about one boy named David uh, from New York, who uh, is a very good juggler. And he also, the, the height of his act is he juggles with fire. And um, he got to the point of juggling with fire. And looking at Swami was just incredible. He was, Swami as God is, as the, as the child, you know. He, the, he just wide-eyed and <laughs> astonishment at this juggling that's taking place. And David dropped one of the pins, 
and you could see the, his face registering. And then he got the pin up and lit it again, and it was going, and he was so happy. It was just beautiful. So we did the whole, we did, uh, did some of the entertainment at the end, and then um, he, um, he called us all down, all, and he gave each one Padnamaskar, uh, asked each one's name. It was incredible. Then he went out into the front part of the auditorium where there were several rooms, and he had a meeting. And then Anil Kumar, who's the principal of uh, Vrindavan and, uh, and does, is one of the best translators I think perhaps the best of uh, Swami's discourses. Anil came out, and he's came out. He's really a he's really an awfully nice guy. He has a good sense of humor. He's a lot of fun. He's wonderful. And he came out uh, and he said, "Swami just said to me, you have a lot to learn from them. <laughs> Devotion." I said, "Oh my God! <laughs> Congratulations!" I said, oh my goodness, what a, what a trip. Then he said, Swami is going to be leaving in a couple of minutes. Um, do you want to go and see him as he leaves and gets into his car? So we all charged up front. Uh, I stood next to the car door. Swami came out of the room, and the first thing he says, where's monkey? Meaning monkey mind. Uh, he particularly liked monkey mind. <laughs> monkey mind was a lot of fun. And uh, so he went to talk with Monkey Mind. Then he got to David. And every time you would see David, uh, all the rest of the time, each time he'd go, he'd, he would talk to David, he'd be doing that. Uh, and everybody would be laughing. And, so, and he just, as he got in the car, he said, performance next Sunday, on the 30th, night, very happy. And gave me a big whop on the cheek. Uh, so that's... Uh, uh, the final, uh, the final part of uh, of that was that uh, we did our rehearsing, and um, on um, the um, on the thirtieth in the afternoon uh, at lunchtime, he went up, came up to me, and said, "Don't go to uh, discourse this afternoon. Go directly to um, go directly to the, um, uh, the auditorium and prepare for 6:30." In the meantime, we had gone, he had assigned several of his students, and there was a very interesting interaction, because we, as a group of Americans, got an opportunity to meet some of Swami's students and work closely with them on lighting, sound, makeup, uh, going to Bangalore to buy some costumes, um, and, um, and several of the musicians, because we didn't have enough, we had a, we had a trumpet and we had a guitar and a bass guitar and a drum but Swami wanted more um, so we had an opportunity to know them and I must say it was an extraordinary experience because the boys are um, they're very sweet they're very very well disciplined they're very nice there's so much love that you feel from them that what developed in the group uh, the two groups together, there was such a, uh, a warmth, such a uh, mutual respect and love. It was perfect. It was just marvelous that, uh, to have that experience. At any rate, um, the, um, on the following Sunday, we were all ready and we'd had our costumes and got the makeup. And, um, and then at uh, 6.30, Swami came backstage and looked around and uh, gave us some words of encouragement. I went up to, uh, to Chris and said, uh, where is the button? And uh, no button. And then realized that there was a button missing from the jacket of his costume. <laughs> but nobody had seen that. And, he, and then he said to another boy, where is your jacket? And the boy later told me, he said, oh my god, you know, as soon as he said that, before he was talking about Chris's button missing, uh, I realized I couldn't find my jacket. Where did I put my jacket? And he was repeating just what was going on in his mind. And then he gave, then he just uh, gave us a little, uh, uh, little, well, not a pep talk, but lots of love and lots of smiles, and he was very happy. And um, he went, and we did, we did the play, and, um, and uh, we had a beautiful program, especially a, a young artist. Uh, did a wonderful program uh, to, to give to him, and we had others pr printed for the audience. And after the play was over, Swami came up, and um, it was just wonderful. It, the boys, a lot of the boys were quite not feeling very well, to put it mildly, uh, that day. Uh, the play has a lot of activity in it. it, it the uh, denouement of the play is a fight between our hero, 
um, and uh, his monkey mind, and that fight is in the form of a martial arts contest. Both boys are martial artists. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, a little bit of activity, a little bit of fun, and then, uh, then there was the juggling. So it was lively, and the songs were lively. Uh, so he came up, and he went straight to David, the uh, fire juggler, and he made a diamond ring for David. And I have a picture of David. I mean, his jaw just... <laughs> I mean, it was quite something. So it was very, very, very beautiful experience, wonderful for, for all of us. And um, the, rest of the, the rest of the summer course, I think the, perhaps the guys realized what had taken place was something that happened for those who went many, many years ago when you had opportunities to see Swami up close, continually, interact with him a great deal. The extent of his, uh, of his grace and, and uh, of his bliss was just extraordinary. So, uh, the summer course itself was, um, um, was quite marvelous. I think you may be reading some of his discourses now, and, uh, oh my goodness, I haven't even, oh well, uh, I'll, it's getting very, <laughs> it's getting a little on the light side. Uh, hmm. Uh, Swami did a lot of very interesting things. He, at one point, at uh, one, of, one of his discourses, he, uh, he asked a riddle. Uh, the riddle was, uh, what is it uh, that when it comes, never goes? Want to try? Love. Well, that's a good try. It's not his answer, but what, uh, what else? That's a good answer, too. Wisdom. When it comes, what is it that when it goes, never comes back? What is that? Anyone? Anyone? I couldn't. Huh? Why? Mm, that's good. Ignorance. Yes, ignorance. Yeah. When ignorance goes, it never comes back. What is it that never comes and never goes? What? Yes, the Atma. Uh, the Atma. Um, <laughs> You know, Swami's open secret really is um, love and, very simply, is just love and you will be loved in return. That's a, a message he gave uh, in the very, very beginning, one of his very earliest discourses, and it's uh, still true. It's, it's your theme. Your theme is love. He is love. Um, the rest of the trip was very beautiful. He gave us another interview uh, in... Um, all this time he's calling me teacher. Um, there was one point when we did not get our picture taken with the rest of the students, and Swami was very upset and called, called the vice chancellor, called the principal, called the, the warden, and said, why didn't the Americans come? Where were the Americans? Well, we thought it was very unhappy. So at the next point, we're sitting outside of his house after the play one afternoon, and he, uh, came, uh, and he said to me, uh, what are your plans, sir? I said, Swami, uh, I'd like to be able to go with the boys to uh, Prashanti Nilayam so they can see, a lot of them have not, all the work that you have done there. He said, you want to go not to Prashanti Nilayam, you want to go to Puta Party, <laughs> correcting me. I said, oh, okay. Uh, he said, bring the boys, and then he had the guys come and stand in front of the house, and then he had made arrangements with uh, three student photographers, uh, and he had them there to take pictures of us because we had not been there for the formal picture taking. Isn't that extraordinary, the, the mystery? I mean, every detail here. Then he took, uh, called us in for um, another interview. And uh, at that interview, he materialized quite a lot of, quite a lot of things. A um, couple of, uh, some rings with little diamonds on them. Um, one boy had... Um, um, has um, a watch, another one, a uh, bracelet, another one, lots of, lots of things. I have some pictures back in, uh, with me that, that show some of the things that, uh, that, uh, that he did, and it was uh, very, uh, very, very sweet. Uh, for me personally, uh, one of the things that I've always wanted to do is I've always wanted to sing for Swami for 10 years. I wanted to sing. That's never happened, although I had lots of uh, fantasies how that would happen. Um, yet, uh, actually, it did happen because I uh, did two of the songs. And uh, 
about three or four days after the play, he came up to me at lunch, and nobody, uh, the program just listed the players, all of our names in alphabetical order, and didn't say who did what. And he came up to me and put his hand on my arm, and he said, your music is very fine. And uh, except for some of the boys didn't even know that the music was my music. Essentially, they're, the words are mine. I just choose melodies and put words, usually things that he said to me, string them together in, into m music. He just, he, again, reminding that he really does know absolutely everything uh, about us. The, um, we followed him to a puta party. He had made arrangements himself um, to show the detail and the love that he's giving. He actually had um, called the um, chief of, uh, head of ashram to be sure that there were proper rooms waiting for us on arrival at Puda Party. Isn't that incredible? And then um, once we were there, he, um, he gave us uh, another interview, uh, materialized some more things. One of the boy's mother was there. He made, uh, she was called, he made a lingam for her, uh, as well as some earrings, and uh, called some of the boys in and spoke with them privately. Um, and uh, that whole story is really still in its early stages because he is indeed uh, changing all of them, all of us, and each one in a very special and unique way. But it was an extraordinary trip. You know, it's so interesting because um, Swami does not disappoint, okay? Although we had good reason to believe, to feel disappointed because we didn't go when we thought we should be going. He's teaching us all the time that it's patience that we need, that he is time, he is the master of time, and that when something is ready, he will know. It may not be what we think is the right time, but it will happen. And not, never, ever lose faith. There was a nice anagram on faith that was uh, given during the summer course, F-A-I-T-H, F, forsaking a, all, I, I, T, trust, H, him. Forsaking all, I, trust, him, for faith. It's, it's sweet, nice. Um, the, um, the rest of the, the rest of the trip, the, re the opportunity for the boys to experience more of Swami was uh, quite special and quite extraordinary. Um, I'll move forward a little bit because I do want to cover a couple things. Um, when I got back uh, to New York, I had uh, uh, a couple of weeks before leaving for a trip through Western Europe, which was very interesting because I had an opportunity, as David said, to speak in five <coughs> cities, in five different countries, and to really get a feeling of what's happening in the Psy organization elsewhere. And I must say it was very sweet and very inspiring because it is really clearly, strongly growing. It was very, 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 very nice. The Europeans are doing some very interesting service too. Um, they are, as a, as a community, all the countries uh, have, been, have gotten together and they are filling um, railroad cars with food and sending them to Bosnia. Um, some have actually gone in trucks. Um, very, very special, very inspiring. Um, then I came back and the last four times that I've gone to see Swami, he said, uh, each time he said to me, how many did you bring? And I assume that if he's saying, how many did you bring, I'm supposed, maybe I'm supposed to bring. So um, I decided to bring, and I did bring a group of 29 people, largely from, um, inspired by the the groups that I do in New York twice a month in my apartment, and though that, that, those are groups for people who are new or relatively new to Swami's teachings. Uh, it's a very, very Western setting. Uh, it's not a setting that pr provides any challenge to them. Over the period of time, a number of people have uh, been able, understanding Swami's teachings, to be able to go to centers and to be comfortable uh, in those centers, expressing themselves in that way and others uh, not, but uh, that's really not my business, really. My business is really to just provide a context 
Uh, and Swami does not want us to proselytize, but to do and set a good example. So um, I, um, I brought 29, and it was very interesting because we got there, um, it was only a two-week trip, and Swami, as you know, is in, uh, in Vrindavan, and we'll stay there for, for a fair, bit of, fair amount of time, a number of months, we're told, uh, while I do some work in uh, Prashanti. And um, the question was, it was very crowded, uh, lots of people, lots of Europeans, because, you know, in August, um, Europe kind of closes down. Uh, they all kind of uh, go uh, on vacation, and there are lots there. Um, but um, very, very fortunately, Swami gave us two interviews. And a lot of the people who came were coming for the first time. And a lot of them said, oh, well, Hal's been getting a lot of attention lately, so if we go with him, is, we're going to... Uh, but it does, I did my best to say, well, it doesn't work that way. Uh, because the point that you get so sure of yourself that you're going to get... Da -da 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 -da, it doesn't happen. Uh, and uh, that's not the reason for going in any way. Of course, everybody wants that. But Swami works with us individually in whatever way is, uh, is right for us. is His timing, always His timing. And the only thing to do there, there's only one thing to do, is you go and you focus on Swami, nothing else. You're not there to, for conversation, you're not there for shopping, you're not there for anything but to focus on Him. And if you focus on Him, you're going to have a wonderful time and you will receive what you need to receive. I think, um, I think we had uh, very special attention when I got there, the, fir the first, uh, we were given a front row in block four uh, to, as permanent seating. And uh, when the first darshan, Swami came up to me and he said, when did you get here? I just got here, Swami. When, how many did you bring? <laughs> 29, Swami. Too many, too many. Um, I said, oh, my goodness, now we're 29. And, um, a few days later, uh, he came back and he said, uh, how many did you bring? Uh, 28 Swami, one was sick. Um, he said, too many. Walked away, turned around and said, go. So I jump up and the, and the man who follows Swami around to take the letters came up to me and said, no, 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 you can't get up now. Wait till Swami gets out of the area. Then you go, go sit down. So, you know, we sat down and uh, um, then Swami made a complete circle around this block, um, which, the seating block, and I wasn't going to get up. He makes, so he's to my right to begin with, all of a sudden he's at my left, talking to people elsewhere. He turns around and looks at me and said, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Madman, go! <laughs> so if we get up, we get up, we, we get up and we go, and um, those two interviews are very interesting. One, because he, um, I think the theme that I felt most strongly was that um, he was making it very clear to the people who were there that um, he knows everything, <laughs> literally everything, everything, everything. It, um, example, um, there's a lady in a wheelchair and uh, she, at one point, said, uh, Swami, how can I serve you best? And he said, dance. And, you know, it was fun. Uh, and then he said, I know there's, uh, there's metal in hip, and this, that, and the other thing. And then he did something with her I'll tell you about a little later. Um, and then one of the men said, Swami, I'm having a physical problem. Yes, yes, I know. The left ear, and he went to detail about the left ear. Don't worry, it's all right. Uh, no, I said, Swami, I'm having some problems too. He said, it's not what you think. It is not a heart problem. You do not have a heart problem. It's only gas. <laughs> uh, and then uh, uh, every person who said something, another lady said, Swami, my son, yes, I know your son is having, your son's having problems and there, there are mental problems, there are, um, uh, there are physical problems. I, and then he started to describe the problem. He said, you know, love heals. Uh, give love. Love heals. I will help. 
to everyone who had something to say, they didn't have to, he made it very clear that he didn't really have to say. I mean, he really knows, he really cares, and he's never going to fail us, that's all. Never, never, never. Um, the, um, for me, it was, uh, oh, the most interesting thing happened, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> when, I, when I got there the second time, the warden, uh, Narasimurti, saw me and came over and said, oh, oh, I have good news for you. I said, tell me. He said, well, uh, on Krishna's birthday, Swami came to me, when I, when he goes to Swami several times a day, he came up to me and he said, um, New York is coming, uh, sing his songs. So he said, the, the boy sang one of your songs. I said, oh, isn't that fabulous? Well, I was delighted. About a few days later, uh, the boys did a, at a budgeon, did a, um, uh, a medley. It was not a, uh, stop the budget, it was just a medley. And there were some English songs, half uh, were, um, uh, were Hindi or Sanskrit, and the other were, uh, the other, there were a few in English. And very nicely sung too, and it ended up with one of my songs. After which Swami got up and uh, they did arty. And then he came down to me and he said, uh, they are singing your songs. I said, yes, Swami. And I said, yes, they are singing your songs. Very nice. And, you know, I'm, I'm you know, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> it's, so, it's so sweet. Um, so, uh, this time, oh, I, the, the last time he was calling me teacher then, uh, when that thing with Puta Party, when he corrected me that I was not going to Prashanti Nilayam, that I was going to Puta Party, at the inside of the interview room, he said to the boys, he said, uh, he is Puta Party man. And then repeated it later, he is Puta Party. I have no idea what that means. Nobody has any idea what that means. Um, we shall see if it has to mean something, but I don't know what it was. This time, um, at uh, the first interview, uh, he, he was calling me, now he's calling me Professor. <laughs> uh, professor this, Professor that. <laughs> he said, he said uh, at, towards the end of the interview, he said, Professor, what are you teaching? And I heard myself give an answer, and I've answered Swami's questions sometimes badly, sometimes pretty well. Um, but this time, I really heard the answer. Uh, I heard myself say the answer, which makes me feel that, you know, they're not, it wasn't my answer. He gave me, the answer was, Swami, I'm talking about you, so I am teaching love. And he just gave me, he said, a very good, and he gave me a beaming smile. <laughs> um, and, and that's really what the great joy is for, for me, because happiness is union with God, isn't it? Uh, it's being able to think God, speak about God, feel God in your heart, to see God in everyone you see. Um, so to, ha to be able to come here in this very good company is it's pure joy, so thank you for the, <laughs> thank you for, for the pure joy. Um, he, um, hmm. You know, he's, I would like, uh, there's so many things I want to do, but I didn't have time to do it. I have, uh, oh my God, I only have, well, only have, oh, uh, the lady, uh, the lady in the wheelchair, um, Swami, um, she can walk. But uh, she walks um, slowly, very painfully, and is uh, and very fearful. Swami took her hand and led her out and led her uh, down uh, the ramp and told her to walk and to exercise. And what he really did with her, it's not that he did uh, an instant healing. Uh, he also confirmed to her that it was a karmic thing. Uh, is that he gave her the, um, the courage uh, the strength, uh, the faith to to try and to do, and so 
she, I mean, you should, we had it last Sunday, we had, uh, we, the, the, we came back and the people were just, they had such a beautiful experience. Why did we have such a beautiful experience? I think the key to going as a group is that this group had a lot of unity. We had met together, we had talked together, some of them came out of um, a newcomers group, but mostly the people themselves, there was such a deep and genuine yearning for him that you could feel that that's what I'm sure what really got us uh, the attention. So he, he helped in many ways. I know I'm supposed to close. I, um, I want to read one of Swami's poems. I want to read a poem of mine. I want to talk about service, but we're not going to do that. So I'm going to... Um, the greatest miracle, Swami's greatest miracle, without any question, is the transformation that takes place within each one of us. Um, when I was in college, I did a lot of writing, did a lot of poetry. Uh, after I got out and went into business, I tore it all up because I really didn't, I knew that I had learned a few tricks uh, that, uh, t that I could use words in such a way that it, they sounded uh, very wise and it was very hollow. And so I tore them up, but as soon as Swami changed my practical life, which he did, he took me out of my business and now I'm doing just doing uh, his work, service work, education work. And um, as soon as that happened, I started to write again. Um, let me read a short, a short poem and then do a closing. And I, I call it a Gratitude, and it really says something about, uh, it talks about me, all right? And it goes, for years of confusion, for years of despair, for years of doubting that you were there, for the child's unknowing, for the blur of youth, for the waste of time, for there was no truth, I am grateful. For pointless learning, for the fog of reason, for pride's false picture, denial of cohesion, for my running here, for recklessness there, for my needs to acquire for why should I care, I am grateful. For frantic acts to fill the time, careless collidings in the maze, for dreary diversions, for love lost in the craze, for the senses distracted, for the failure to hear, for the warping of sight, unsuspecting you near. I am grateful. All the trials were painful. All were catalysts you sent. With every failure, you planted seeds of divine discontent. So seeking here, asking there, the yearning search had begun. Through forms and through places, the many dissolved to one. Each problem a candle, many candles, clear sight. You answered my prayer, Lord Sai, pillar of light. Here in your presence, now here at your feet, God's in his heaven, within my heart's beat. I am grateful. We go to him, you know, we return, it's returning to our own heart's home to go to him. It really is to revel in the divine feast to be there. It's to be seated at his banquet table, to be fed by his hand, to be encouraged by his words. The Lord reshapes, recasts, transforms every single one of us. He quiets the anxieties and the fears. He calms the existential concerns. His corrections cancel the calamities 
of careless living. He seeks nothing. He seeks no disciples, no followers. He seeks no devotees. He simply, very lovingly, directs, corrects, advises, admonishes, helps us to regain the right road. His words are the grace that transforms. His deeds are the models for meaningful living. He expands the lake of peace that is within each one of us. And he feeds that lake with the eternal stream of his divine love until it envelops our entire world. Call on him. Say his name. See his form. Call on him. He is within you, beside you, around you. He is ever responsive to the yearning of your heart. Call on him. To have seen him is to have seen beyond the darkness of ignorance. And when there is earnest prayer, compassion descends. Call on him. He will never let you down. He will never fail you. Never, never, never. How great a grace do we all share together. Sarah.